Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I'm going to make a bread of mine. Now I started my sourdough, it's like over a week now, and it's doing beautifully. And I've been making delicious bread almost every day, every second day. Today I want to make a bread for an aunt of mine. And unfortunately I don't have time for it to do the whole step where you keep it in the fridge overnight because that's what you do with sourdoughs when you make a sourdough bread the longer it sits uh, in the refrigerator the more the flavor is intense and the more delicious the bread is easier also to digest but because i want to get this bread to her earlier than what the plan was i'm going to add uh, a little bit of yeast just to get the bread going it's going to be delicious bread no matter what so i'm excited over that I'm going to start off with, since I'm not using bread flour, I want to add a little extra gluten to my flour. So I have a plate here that I am going to add. There we go. One cup of flour. And we're just going to add, let's say about maybe a tablespoon of gluten. Just a little extra push to give those nice strands. Now, you don't have to. You could just leave it without the gluten if you don't want. But since I'm making the bread, I like that extra gluten in the bread. So I'm just going to mix this up a little. There we go. And we'll add this to our water later. And right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my sourdough starter. I've been pushing this mixture down the other day it was like overflowing but look how beautiful that is i'm not sure if you can see it so i'm going to put some of my starter this is going to help with adding flavors and now since i took some of my starter out i'm going to add more flour later on but for now i'm just going to start off with about a, a couple of tablespoons of my uh, sourdough and to this I'm going to add some warm water and this is how I normally make bread I make it from scratch so it's all about feel and it's very easy once you start uh, making bread this way just so much better and I am going to use my hand I just want to give it a good rinse Perfect. I'm keeping a little bowl of water where I can rinse my hand as needed. And to this, I will add a little bit of yeast because I want to get this bread to her faster than it would normally take if I'd be making a sourdough bread. A sourdough bread can take up to two, uh, two days, even longer. The longer you keep it in the refrigerator, the better the taste becomes. So I'm just going to give it a little swirl. I can even add maybe just a little extra. Just a little. Look at the beautiful bubbles. Just a little extra. There you go. And that's another trick. If your sourdough floats, you know that, see how it floats around? You know that your sour, your sour starter has a good amount of yeast in it. And don't be afraid to use your hands. That's what they're there for. And to this, we're going to add that one cup of flour. And we're going to add another cup. And because she loves cornbread, I'm going to add some corn flour to this. A 
about another cup or so of corn flour. And if I need more flour, I've got it with me. And if I need more water, I will have that with me also. I'm just going to put a little bit of maple. I'm going to put just a little bit of maple. There we go. And I'm going to put just a little drizzle of olive oil. There you go. You don't need that much. And we're going to start. We're going to put the salt later on. But we're going to start in the middle and we're just going to slowly just squeeze. And work that dough in. It's going to feel like a gooey mess, which it is. Okay, we're going to add another cup of flour. We're going to start off with just a half for now. And if we need more, we'll add it. And you're going to see as you're working this, It hydrates. Okay. Get my blade. There we go. A lot easier this way. Okay, I'm going to just wet my hand. It'll just help me pick this up a little easier. Okay, we're just going to let this rest. Ok, 
Okay, using sourdough does make your dough just a little, just a little uh, stickier than if you would just be using uh, some yeast. So we're just going to let it rest and then we're going to come back to it. Now, again, because I'm using added yeast to this recipe, uh, it's going to rise a lot faster than if it was just sourdough. Sourdough does take longer for it to rise. Okay, so I'm just going to cover it and just let it rest. And what's going to happen is that the, uh, the flour is going to absorb all that water and it's going to be easier for me also to mix it again. So I'm just going to wash my hands. Okay, so I'm going to just put this aside and I'm going to feed my sourdough so I'm going to put one two yeah that's more than enough mix it in And by feeding it, we keep this going. Just a little drop of water. You don't want too much. In the beginning, when I first made my, um, I call it more of a slurry, I did half and half. But as it starts fermenting, what you want is you want more of a, almost like a very thick pasty. Notice how it's nice and thick. And all you do is just mix it in. Make sure all that flour mixes in. And you're going to feed the yeast. And that is going to be one happy starter. Now, someone mentioned that their starter is making mold. Your starter should not make any mold it's very rare that it happens but if it does happen do your best to try and take it off if you can and if you find that it just keeps making mold on you and change the jar but if you find it still keeps making mold on you i say scrap it put it in your compost bin and just start over so there we go you're gonna see in no time at all this is gonna be nice and bubbly i might have to change container that's for sure maybe just a little extra flour i like to have more than i need just a little drop of water mix that in meanwhile while i'm doing this my dough is sitting and it's uh, resting and pulling in all that moisture and swelling every little bit of that flour there we go perfect so on goes my lid yeah i probably will have to change container because I'm just getting more and more all the time either that or I've got to keep making bread okay and off to the side it goes where it does its magic okay I'm going to keep the water here not that I might need it I've got my spatula in my bowl of water in case I need that wipe off the counter and I'll see you in a few minutes Okay, I just found some beautiful organic whole wheat. I think I'm going to sprinkle some of that on top just to give it that extra. That extra, extra. See how the dough just just by resting it has a whole different feel it's less sticky have you noticed that this is perfect 
So I'm going to let it rest a few more minutes. And then I'm going to give it a good knead. And into the water it goes. Get your hands nice and clean. There we go. Yeah, this is perfect. Look at that. And that's the whole thing. A lot of people rush the bread, or you could use a machine if you want. But you know what? I find that when you use the machine, and it's not that I don't use the machine, I use the machine quite often because what it really does is make my life a little easier. If I'm in a hurry and I need to make bread, I'm not going to stand here and loving my bread as much as I am right now. Uh, but uh, learn to make bread by hand because your hands are there for a reason. Uh, your taste buds are there for a reason. Smell, everything works together. So you know uh, if your bread is too sloppy where you can't even, like if I dip my hands in water now, I should be able to pick this up. And we know that this is, this is doing really well. Um, if I wet my hands and as I'm mixing, it's just like sloppering everywhere, you know you're going to need a little extra flour. So by doing things by hand, you're just becoming more knowledgeable of bread making. You have more of a connection with your food. And remember, you love your food, everybody else is going to love your food with you. So that's the trick and the magic of good cooking. So like I said, I'm going to just let this rest a little more. And then we're going to just give it a little knead and we're going to knead it more than once until we do that final rise and then we're going to cook it and we have a nice loaf of bread so i'll see you in a bit Okay, I've got two minutes left, so I am going to just do what I have to do. We've got a huge snowstorm. They were saying up to 50 centimeters of snow. My daughter just went out. My husband went out in the middle of the night. He still hasn't come home, and he's not going to come home till tomorrow. So my daughter asked if I wanted to help her to clean outside. We've got like two front entrances, so it's a lot, it's a lot of work. So I'm just going to show you. Uh, Notice how if I use a spatula, it just comes off. So we know that the flour is absorbed all that water. It could have stayed even a little longer, but because I'm in a rush, I'm going to rush it a little. So I'm going to put a little bit of flour on here. And where is... Okay, since I found some whole wheat flour, um, I'm going to use that. And I'm just going to kind of drop it on there. And you don't have to really work hard at this. If you let the bread rest, you really don't have to work hard at uh, making bread. It's just a matter of folding. There we go. There we go. It's just a matter of folding your bread in. It really doesn't have to be overworked either. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to cover this and I'm going to come back in about uh, 35 minutes and I'm going to refold it. We're just going to keep refolding this bread until it does its magic. So I'm going to see you in about 35 minutes. Okay guys. Okay, a little bit of flour, there we go, cover it again, see you in 35 minutes. We're going to put a nice amount of salt on this. 
I could have put a little earlier, but with my daughter calling me to clean the snow, where is my salt? Here we go. Um, my daughter kept saying, are you going to come out and help me, Mom? So I kind of forgot to put the salt, but uh, when it was still in the bowl was a good time after it rested like for 10 minutes. That's a good time to put it, but I'm going to make it work anyhow, right? We're just going to have to knead a little more often. I was hoping I didn't have to knead it. That's okay. It's just going to help me get that gluten nice and stretchy. Notice how that sloppy dough became like such a beautiful, beautiful textured dough. So when you're first kneading it, sorry, when you're first adding flour and water, you don't want it too stiff because then you're going to have a very, very stiff dough. So I'm just trying to get that salt in there because I should have done this a little earlier. But like I said, when I had it in my bowl and I had mixed everything together and I let it rest, when I went back for the first time to fold it, that's when I should have mixed my salt in. But it'll be good. The salt will work its way in. Always keep a bowl of water in case you need it. But at this point, uh, everything is just so, so put together that you really don't need that water. Make sure your, your board is always flowered. Okay, so roll, roll, roll. So I'll see you in about 35 minutes. Okay, so at this point, I am going to put it in my cast iron, and I'm going to let it rise in there until I'm ready to cook it. So there is my beautiful, beautiful ball of bread. There we go. I'll see you in a bit when it's time to uh, when it's time to uh, cook it just like a baby except we don't put babies in the oven <laughs> oh, you silly goose Erica <laughs> there we go So we'll see you later.
Okay, we're going to check this bread and see how it's coming. Oh my goodness, isn't it beautiful? I'm just going to let it rise a little longer. And then we're going to put it in the oven and I'm going to show you how it looks. I'm going to score the top later on. And it's going to go into a 500 degree oven for 30 minutes. And then I'm going to uncover it and let it cook for at least another seven minutes with no lid on but i will put the lid on this but i will i will let it rise a little longer okay here we go and now you're going to need a razor one of these razors and that's just going to help make uh, just a beautiful sharp cut so we can decorate this beautiful bread uh, maybe we're going to do some leaves. There we go. There we go. And into the oven it's going to go. 500 for 30 minutes with the lid on and then we're going to uncover it and we're going to uh, cook it for seven minutes till it's nice and golden so I'll show you what it looks like at the end okay guys are you ready I'm gonna try and get this out of burning myself. And here is my bread. Now, I can't cut this open because if I cut it open, my aunt's gonna get a bread that was cut open. I'm gonna put some pictures of some of the breads I make and you have an idea what it looks like inside. But there you go, very easy, very simple. I hardly had to work the dough at all. It was basically just waiting time. Uh, so I hope you like this recipe and if you give it a try, come back, let me know what you think. And I'm gonna post all different types of recipes that I actually make uh, for, for bread. So I said 30 minutes in the oven at 500 with the lid on. Uh, you will need a Dutch oven. I'm using a cast iron uh, pot with a lid. Remove the lid after 30 minutes. Between 5 to 10 minutes, it depends. This took a little longer. I put a timer for 7, but in 5 minutes it was nice and golden. So I was okay to pull this out. But play it by ear. 30 minutes covered, and then just uncover it. And just keep an eye on it between 5 to 10 minutes. So I hope you like it. And if you do come back, let me know what you think. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends.